Hi everyone. Um, in our previous class, we looked at processes involving ideal gases and we tried um, contrasting ideal gases with real fluids or real fluids which can be gases or um, other things um, like water, liquid. And um, in our previous classes from chapter in chapter two and chapter three, the examples we looked at were for real were for real um, fluids such as water vapor and water. But in this particular case, we are looking at ideal gases, and we emphasize the fact that ideal gases actually uh, they behave differently. They are imaginary, so they are not real gases, and we emphasize the fact that there are two characteristic conditions for these two i mean for these uh, um, gases the fact that the um, mol um, the intermolecular interactions for the gases are negligible also the fact that the volume the ideal gases occupy are also negligible so we and then we looked at the gas under different conditions so let's look at an example being provided here the question says heat is transferred to 10 kilogram of hair let's start picking the material i mean the um, let's look at the values we've been given. So we've been given mass of air, which is initially at 100 kPa. So take note of that initially. So that means there is an initial pressure and 300 Kelvin until its temperature reaches 600 Kelvin. So that means we have a T1 and we have a T2. Determine the change in the internal energy. So we are looking for change in U. The change in enthalpy that is changing h heat supplied and the work done heat supplied that will be a q and then the work done that will be a w and we're looking at this under different conditions isochoric uh, process and isobaric process what else have we been given um, we've been given the fact that this particular air is behaving as an ideal gas remember as we said air camp is real but in this case the, we've been told that it behaves as an ideal gas so that means all these the assumptions herein follow so pv is it, um, the first one pv equal to nrt where n is the number of moles of the gas r is the ideal gas constant take note the reason why n has been it is critical for us to look at n here is the fact that um, if you look at our r value you see it's kilomole so and remember n is number of moles so it's critical to look at that if you look at your cp value as well you see kilomole kilomole you remember we said um that it is essential we have consistency of units um this should become clearer as you move on so what this means is that for example in as much that we said that we um, talked about the fact that pv we've said pv equals um, NRT but in another instance if those values were in um, for example kilojoule per kilogram so th we can equally use this formula that's what that means for us another thing we'll be looking at over and over again is our first law of thermodynamics which says that change in u equals q minus w that's what we'll be working with over and over so and um as usual practice when it comes to calculation you want to write down the known values and you want to look, pick up what are the unknown so we've um, unpacked the known values we've also identified the fact that um, the units need to be consistent in our calculations so let's start with the first condition the isochoric process remember um, okay we're working with a change in u equals q minus w one of the equations we came across in class um, the last time was the fact that a change in u also equals cv a change in u equals cv change in t remember for isochoric process in isochoric process we say the volume is constant so if volume is constant that means work done equals zero so based on that fact that's based on this fact change in u equals q change in u equals q and then since we know um from, we know that q equals this so that's how we have that formula cv 
change in t so let's plug in what we've been given so we have um let's plug in what we've been given so we have a q equals we've been given cv which is 20.785 and one thing i'll always advise is write down the units to see if you are working with consistent um, units so kilo joules per kilo mole kelvin and then that is our cv change in t we have with um the first we um t change in t will be uh remember that will be t2 minus t1 and remember t2 was um from what we were given t2 equals 600 kelvin t1 300 kelvin if you um do um subtract that you should have your 300 kelvin so if you are to um look at our units kelvin will cut um cut out kelvin there and then we will, should be left with um the unit that we are left with should be kilojoule per kilojoule per kilo mole kilojoule per kilo mole so which is if you multiply 20.785 with 300 it should give us six two three five point five kilojoule per mole kilojoule per mole so that's what uh value will be but remember our q value should be in kilojoules so the question is how do we remove how do we get rid of the mole so that is where our pv equals to nrt comes in so that is where this number of more comes in so how do we do that recall from chemistry actually before we go back to i mean before we continue with that i don't want us to miss this um diagram here so typically for um for us to understand the process is better that's why i've drawn this diagram so you we have the, to show the pv relationship you have your p here you have your volume here remember it's isochoric so volume is constant so volume is constant so if you pick a value of volume here the pressure is changing from one to two but volume does not change so v1 equals to v2 so it is always good to whenever you're working out such calculations draw out this diagram just for you to be able to visualize what is happening so let's go back to this equation we've indicated that this is what we've got but we want to ensure that our value is in kilojoule so then from um, chemistry we'll remember that a number of mole equals mass mass m mass m we've been given that mass m divided by molecular weight so we've got all these values provided which is your mw we have this provided so if we plug in those 10 kilogram divided by 29 we have a kilogram per mole remember as we said kilogram per so kilogram per kilo mole rather kilogram per kilo mole so as we've indicated it's always it's a write out your um, units so that you can make sense of it if you do that you should have 0 0.3448 kilo mole so i haven't gotten that we can then go back and multiply that with this so we can say um q and remember we've also said q equals with from here q equals change in u so we can say q equals change in u equals and then from here we have our q in um, kilojoule per mole so write that down six two three five point five kilo joules per mole multiply by that 0 0.3448 sorry this should be kilo more kilo more kilo more so it's always essential to do that to make sure that you're working with consistent value so if you do that you then you end up with so let's plug that in and that should give us two one 
five zero kilo joules so now we have our value in kilojoules. So this is our Q. This is a change in U. Now, the other thing we've been asked to calculate is our H, our H value, the um, enthalpy. We've been asked to calculate the change in enthalpy. Remember, recall the fact that H equals U plus PV, which also is can be written as change in H equal change in u plus change p v change p v and um, so we can another way i want us to see this calculation remember it was after we've calculated that we included the n we can also include the n right from the beginning so either way you still get your answer so if you are to include the n from the beginning so what will happen is we can then use, so we've got this equation here. We've got that equation here. We can then, so this is one equation. This is another one. Let's include the third one, which we've seen earlier on, which is PV equals NRT. So we are including, we can include the N right from the beginning. So if you do that, if you plug that in here, so then a change in enthalpy change in u or in, uh, internal energy becomes change in nrt which becomes change in u plus n r remember so we, we have those values and becomes change in u n r change in t change in u n r change in t so we have that. And then we can plug that in. We've already calculated our change in U, which is 2150 plus. And then we have our N value. So we have our N value, which is 0. Point. So we've calculated our N already, 0. 0.3448 kilo more and then we have our r value 8.314 kilojoule per kilo more kelvin and then further that's still further multiplied by let's try and include that here change in c 600 minus 300 that would be um, 300k so if we, um, as we did uh, um, earlier on, this Kelvin should um, cross that out. This kilo mole should cross that out. And then we should be left with change in H, 2150 kilojoule plus 860 kilojoule. So we can see the consistency in, um, consistency in, in terms of our unit. And then our change in H, Will be equal to three zero one zero kilo joules three zero one zero kilo joules so um so we have a change in h we have a q we have a change in u and then obviously even um, the, because the question has asked for um Ross to calculate work done for everything but we've already indicated that work done is zero but which uh, we've already indicated for isochoric that it's zero um, change in u equals q minus w and then we know that we can say equals q minus change in u it's um it's we've already we already know that we're just showing what we already know if you plug in those values zero which is what we expected so if you were to write down all the values that we calculated change in U to 150 kilojoule, um, we've calculated a change in H. It is always essential to do this to show that you've addressed all the questions asked. 2150 kilojoule, W0 kilojoule, and remember, consistency in unit so we've done that for our uh, we've done that for 
um, isochoric process. So let's move on to the second process, um, the second condition, isobaric process, isobaric process. If you may recall from there, we've seen the fact that um, H equals, um, we've seen that um, H equals Q. Um, we've seen um, changing H equals Q equals CP. We've done with, um, yeah, we've got, we did that in class. We showed this in class. Um, also, please let's look at this diagram. It's essential. Remember at isobaric, what is constant? Pressure. So if you are to pick a value of pressure anywhere, um, so if you pick a value of pressure, you can see the volume is changing. So we have V2, V1, but the pressure remains the same. So this is a diagram that describes, a PV diagram describing isobaric um, process. All right, so moving on. So from here, we know that Q, um, we know that Q is the same as changing H. We have a CP value has been given as 29.099. And then we know our changing, um, we know our changing T, which we've been um, using since um, the beginning of the calculations is equal to 300 Kelvin. But let's quickly look at, um, let's look at the unit change because for this, so let me bring that out here, 29.099, the unit was kilojoule per kilo more Kelvin. So um, that's the unit for that one. And we have the unit here, we have that. So that means this will take that out. And then we should, um, so, yeah, sorry, this out, that is Kelvin, not kilomole. So Kelvin will take out Kelvin. And that means we, our answer will be in kilojoule per kilomole. So which is, if you multiply this with 300, it should give us 8729. 0.7 kilo joule per kilo more. But remember, like I mentioned earlier on, you can um, include the N right from the beginning. And then also remember the fact that we've said uh, all uh, everything involved, all the energy values should be in kilo joule. We have a we have a kilo more value already so all we need to just do is plug that in so um, you haven't completed the um the answer if you stay here it's incomplete so we need to ensure that we complete it by having the right unit so to do that we are ready so we know the q equals change in h from the previous um, slide we also know our n so all we just do is 8279.7 kilo joule per kilo mole multiplied by the N value, which is 0 0.3448 kilo mole. So that cancels that out and that should give us um, 3010 kilo joule. That is our Q. So this is our Q value at the same time it's a change in H value. So we've got that for isobaric. But we still need to um, we still need to get our um, change in internal energy. So what we can do is let's look at what equation actually bring and what we have and what we need together. And that would be H equals U plus PV. So we've, we are looking for this. We've got this. We've got that. So we know that. And then we also know this equation becomes change in H equals change in U plus change in PV. We remember NRT. So if we um, plug that in, we have a change in H equals change in U plus change in NRT. Change in 
changing NRT and then we move on to changing NRT changing H equals changing U plus NR changing T changing T let's plug in all the values we've got um, which since it's U we're looking for we can make U the subject of the formula we can make U the subject of the changing you the subject of the formula and then it becomes changing you changing h minus n r change in t let's plug in everything we've got 310 0 kilojoules minus 0 three four four eight just to create space let me write everything out without the um without the units so times 8.314 times 300 so let's write the units here so this kilo more um we have this would be was in this is in kilo more this is in kilojoule per kilo more kelvin and that's this is in kelvin kilo more cancels out so that means we are left with kilojoule kilo joule so if we do that our answer should be three one zero kilojoule minus eight sixty kilojoule change in u equals two one five zero kilo joule so let's write out um, let's write out what we've got and what else we're looking for um but if you look at so we've got a change in u now we've got a change in h but we, we've got a q but we don't have w yet so let's go back um what formula has i mean what formula combines the known and the unknown that would be the first law of thermodynamics formula q minus w if you make w the subject of the formula you're left with q minus change in u we have a q 3010 minus 2150 that gives us 860 kilo joule 860 kilo joule so um kilo joule and then changing so let's write out let's write write out everything we've calculated so for the isobaric system changing u equals 2150 kilo joule changing h 30 10 kilo joule q 3010 kilojoule work done 860 kilojoule so we've got everything needed for the isobaric system so we've got the isobaric system i mean process rather it would be interesting to compare um, the values under these different conditions and then we've got for the isochoric process so please look through everything we've done and then if you have any query or um, anything that needs clarification don't hesitate to um, email me or chat to me on whatsapp i'll see you again in the next class cheers